Hello dear friends, welcome to Dental Education Hub YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss the morphology of the permanent mandibular central incisor. So what we are going to discuss uh, in this brief video lecture? In this brief video lecture, we are going to discuss the chronology or the timeline of development of the mandibular central incisor, the number of this tooth in various tooth notation systems, and at the end, we will discuss the identification and the landmarks that are present on the mandibular central incisors. So watch this video till the end and don't forget to give us your feedback in the comments. So the timeline of development, uh, the mandibular central incisors, uh, they start calcifying or the calcif or the mineralization of this tooth, it begins uh, at the age of three to four months. The enamel is completed by the age of four to five years and the tooth it emerge into the oral cavity by the age of six to seven years and when the tooth it emerge into the oral cavity only two-thirds of the root is formed so the remaining root it is completed if you add plus two years so if you add plus two into seven it is approximately it is it is nine years. So the completion of root is are at the age of nine years. Now we will discuss the number of this tooth in various tooth notation systems. So the first notation system is the universal notation system. So in the universal numbering system, the number of the mandibular central incisors, so these are the two mandibular central incisors, for the right mandibular central incisor, the number is 2525, and for the left, it is 24. So 24 for the right left and 25 for the right central mandibular central incisor. So in the palmar notation system, uh, the number of this tooth is in the mandibular central incisors, the number is 1 and 1. But the only difference from the maxillary central incisor is this symbol. So these two symbols, they indicate the mandibular arch and mandibular arch of the left side and mandibular arch of the right side. In the FDI notation system, also known as the Federation the Entire International Notation System, the number of the mandibular left central incisor is 3-1. It's not 31, it's 31. And now for the right mandibular central incisor, the number is 41. It's not 41. Because 1, it indicates the number of the tooth, and 4 indicates the quadrant. So if you want to learn more about tooth num notation system, I have given the link of uh, the tooth numbering system lecture in the description of this video. So the mandibular central incisors, they are centrally located within the mandible, as you can see in this clinical picture. So the mesial surface of the central incisors, they are, they share their mesial surfaces with each other. So the mesial surfaces are in contact with each other. The Mandibular central incisors, they are the smallest tooth in the dental arches. So in the permanent dentition, the mandibular central incisors, they are the smallest tooth. And with the opposing dental arch, they are only in contact with the one tooth. That is the maxillary central incisor. So they are not in contact with more than one tooth. They are only in contact with the max corresponding maxillary central incisor only. Now, let's discuss uh, this tooth from the labial aspect. So, from the labial aspect, the, uh, the surface of the crown is smooth with very few developmental lines. And those developmental lines, they are not very prominent. As you can see in this picture and this diagram, so this is a crown surface. And you can see here, there are very faint developmental lines are there. So, they are not prominent. So, overall, the labial surface of the crown, it is smooth. Now, these are the incisal angles. So, this is the mesial surface. This is the distal surface. 
and this is the incisal surface. So the D is quite large, I'm sorry. <laughs> so this angle is the mesoincisal angle. So this angle is the mesoincisal angle and this is the distoincisal angle. So relatively, both of these angles, they are sharp. They are not as rounded as in case of the maxillary central and the lateral incisor. So the incisor ridge, this is the incisor ridge and this incisor ridge, it is nearly straight. So this incisor ridge is straight and it forms and if I draw a line, so it forms around a 90 degree angle with the incisal surface. So it forms nearly a 90 degree angle, a right angle. The apical third of the root, it terminates as a pointed root apex. From the lingual aspect, the marginal ridges, they are not prominent. So they are inconspicuous. It means they are not very prominent. So this marginal ridge is the, is the mesial marginal ridge. And this ridge is the distal marginal ridge. So because this is the mesial side, and this is the, the distal side. So these marginal ridges, these ridges are not very prominent. This is a distal marginal ridge, and this is the mesial marginal ridge. So this is the cingulum. So cingulum is also not very well developed in the mandibular central incisor. Because these marginal ridges and the cingulum, it is not very well developed, therefore, a slight concavity is present, known as the lingual fossa. And this lingual fossa is also very slightly concave. So the lingual surface of the crown, it is a smooth because there is no developmental lines are present or grooves are present on the crown surface from the lingual side. So the outline and uh, and surfaces of the crown, they are regular and they are symmetrical. I mean, both of the sides, they are relatively, they are the same. Now, from the mesial aspect, the incisor ridge is usually lingual to the center of the root. So, this is the incisor ridge. So, if we draw a straight line from the root apex, if we draw a straight line from the root apex, so the incisor ridge is, is slightly lingual because of the lingual inclination of the crown. In the cervical line, this is the cervical line or the cemento-enamel junction. So on the mesial surface, the curvature of the cervical line is more marked and it is approximately one-third of the length of the crown. The surface of the root, it is flat. So... So the root surface, it is flat uh, and there's a developmental depression on the root surface. So there is a shallow developmental depression on the, on the root surface, but it is not very prominent. So from the distal aspect, the crown and the root, they are similar to that of the mesial aspect because the crown, it is symmetrical from both sides with few differences. So the cervical line curvature, it is less as compared to the mesial side. There is a developmental depression over here on the root surface. And this developmental depression, it is more marked as compared to that of the mesial surface of the same tooth. So this is the developmental depression on the root surface. Now, from the incisal aspect, the so incisal edge, it is at right angle to the line uh, bisecting the crown labiolingually. So this is the labial surface of the crown, labial surface, and this is the lingual surface of the crown. This is the incisor ridge. So if you draw a line labiolingually, this incisor ridge, it forms a 90 degree angle, a right angle. It forms a right angle. And this is one of the identification 
uh, points of this tooth uh, from the mandibular lateral incisor because in the mandibular lateral incisor, this incisal surface, it is curved. So in the central incisor, it is straight. So the labial surface of the crown, this is the labial surface of the crown. It is wider, mesiodistally, as compared to the mesiodistal dimension of the crown on the lingual side. So on the lingual side, the dimensions of the crown are less as compared to the labial side. The labiolingual dimensions, this is the labiolingual dimension. So the labial, labiolingual dimension, it is always great as compared to the mesiodistal dimensions. So because the inclination of the crown or on the lingual side, therefore more of the labial surface is visible from the incisal aspect as compared to the lingual aspect. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and do share it with your colleagues. And don't forget to give us your feedback in the comments. If you have any question, also ask in the comments and I'll try to respond as early as possible. Again, thank you. Bye.